All right, so where do we go from here? So I'm new to YouTube. I've only been doing it about 10 months. I didn't think I would ever make a video like this, but after recent events and seeing what Judah's Garage put out as far as his video, I thought it would be best that I actually tell you all the true story. Um, if you're here because you watched his video, I would encourage you to watch it again and look at all the edits. And what I mean by that is look at all the cuts, right? You can tell that he kind of edited the video to fit his narrative. And I'm just gonna give it to you guys straight. So uh, the car you see behind me is my Z06 Corvette. I brought both of my cars up to North Carolina to get some work done, which in the next video I'm excited because I'm gonna show you guys the cam install, all the work we did, and how much power these puppies put down. I'm super impressed, but that's why I was up in Gastonia, North Carolina. One of the guys that works there had a Corvette that he wanted to sell to me, and I just don't need that Corvette, right? So what I did was, I'll post it, give me a finder's fee, and uh, you know whoever comes up here to buy it, buys it. So the owner was good with that. That night, I told him, give me the details about the car. He gave me all the details, and what you see on my Instagram post, which I'll go ahead and put up on the screen for you all, is directly out of the owner's mouth. So. Everything that the owner told me, I put on the post, I posted it. Immediately, I had probably, between comments and DMs, over 100 people said they'll buy it. People saying, why are ready? People saying they'll pay more than the asking price. So it was sold, right? Let's, let's make that clear. This car was sold regardless of who buys it. And this is where Judah comes into play. So, so about two months ago, I sold a 350Z, which I originally bought for my girlfriend, and then we went drifting in it rod knocked. So, Rather than going through the process of LS swapping just because I have so much going on with the Corvette and Camaro, I sold that. Judah called me probably five to ten times trying to talk me out of selling it to my buddy Colt ended up buying it. He was like, listen man, I'm trying to get into drifting. I really want to buy this car. And I told him I'm just not that type of person. I'm not going to pull back on, on Colt who I already agreed to sell the vehicle to. And I told Judah the next time something comes up, I'll let him know. This deal came up and after I posted it, I didn't respond to anybody yet, so I called Judah and it was late at night and I said, hey man, next time a deal comes up, I'm gonna reach out to you before I, before I sell it to anyone else. And uh, that brought us to where we're at. I called him, he said, yeah, I definitely want it. He talked to Kenny Slides and Kenny Slides said, yeah man, that's a good deal, go get it. And keep in mind, at this point, I had not seen the car in person. The owner was gonna bring the car up to the shop, but again, I've been working with the guy all week. He's one of the mechanics that was helping on the Camaro and Corvette, doing the cam install and stuff. The guy knows his shit. So I trusted what he said. And to this day, I don't believe that he was being misleading at all. He was just giving me the information as far as the mods of the car and the details of the car that he felt was important. And truthfully, any drifter wouldn't give a damn about the title. Um, in fact, what I'll probably do in a second here is call Smokey Drift. He's the one that bought it literally the same day that Judah walked. So I called Smokey after Judah flipped out about the title and, and said that he didn't want it. Um, and I said, hey man, listen, I just want to let you know that someone's here and they don't want the car because it has a rebuilt title and it has a crack in the door handle or, or from the door to the door handle rather. And Frankie's response was, I don't give a shit. It's a drift car. And that will be 99% of people's responses if they're buying this for a drift car, right? And at the end of the day, this car is still worth probably 10, 11 grand as it sits. So to give you guys a rundown of the car, it's a 2001 Corvette. It is a manual six speed. So that's, that's hard to find. And it's already cammed and built. So Devin, the owner, again, who's a mechanic at the shop, he already put a torque V4 cam in it. He already did hardened push rods, 660 springs, titanium retainers. It's got a Holly high ram intake. It's got headers, intake, exhaust. Um, what else? It's got an upgraded oil pump. So literally like all the mods that you would do to make the motor reliable, this guy's already done. Sure, it's got some imperfections, but it's a 20 year old car. And for 7,500 bucks, like, who would care about that, right? So fast forward to Judah flying up there and I thought he was gonna bring a trailer, but he says, hey man, I just wanna fly up there and then drive the car down. I said, yeah, if that's what you wanna do, I'll make sure I can help in any way. So mind you, I'm still rushing to try to finish the Camaro and Corvette in time for this drift demo that me and J-Speed Tuning are putting on. So I have to take time out of my day to try to pick him up from the airport. My buddy Darius ended up going, huge shout out to Darius for doing that. Went and picked them up from the airport, brought them back to the shop so he could see the car. And that's when, you know, shit kind of hit the fan for Judah. And I could tell that night, even though he didn't say it, that he didn't want to buy it. And in fact, if you watch his part one video, you'll notice he did take the car out that night 
and he's he's basically disinterested because of the condition of the car again it had a crack on the driver's side door from the top where the window seal would go to the door handle so about a six inch hairline crack now keep in mind these cars are fiberglass so it wouldn't be a big deal to oh let me not say that because that's what judah flipped out when i said it's not a big deal but it is not a big deal for all of you watching for some fiberglass repair. It truly is not a big deal, especially for a drift car. This isn't something that you're gonna freaking chauffeur around the President of the United States or anything crazy. This is something that you're gonna go and take to a track and absolutely thrash on. I've gone through probably three different front bumpers on the Camaro, two different rear bumpers on the Camaro. The front bumper on this Corvette has drift stitching, which is where you take zip ties and stitch the bumper together. You're, you don't want a pretty car because it's just gonna get banged up. Judah's just beginning, so any beginner, I would tell them, go and get what I call a seat time car. And that means something that is mechanically sound. Aesthetic-wise, if it needs any sort of updates, that's not a big deal. You want something that's mechanically sound. So this was still a good deal, in my opinion. So when Judah flipped out the next day saying, oh, I don't want this, it kind of caught me off guard, right? So I told him, I was like, listen, it's not a big deal if you want your money back. We can give you your money back. And here's what I'll tell you guys. It's my belief that Judah knew he did not want the car. And he had mentioned the day before, and in fact, it's funny, he did not include so much of the conversations that we had. He edited it all out, again, to fit his narrative. I told him the night before because I could tell he felt indifferent about the car. I told him, I said, listen, man, if, if you're not gonna be happy with this purchase, don't let anybody influence you to buy it, right? Not me, not your friends, nobody. You want something that every time you get in the car, it puts a smile on your face, right? And that would be my advice to all of you. Find something that's going to make you happy because if, if you're gonna go into something half-heartedly, you're not going to get the joy and fulfillment that you're gonna get with a vehicle that literally every time you see it, it puts a smile on your face. So I could tell he wasn't as thrilled about this car as I was. So my belief is that since he flew out this way, he kind of had it in his mind that he wanted to make a video, that he wanted to make a video basically flipping out and, 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 saying, that, um, and saying that this isn't what he thought he was buying and all this other stuff. So. Fast forward to the next day, he shows up, and again, me, JD, the guys, we're all working, right? And I, I tell him to go talk to Sid, who is JD's wife, and I say, hey, you know, she'll help you out with uh, the money and the title and everything like that. She'll, she'll do the transaction, because keep in mind, I'm not selling this car. I simply told the guy, hey, give me a finder's fee and I'll post it for you. So Judah pays, he gets the title, he opens the title, and I guess it had, uh, a rebuilt status or something like that on the title. I didn't even get truthfully get a chance to look at it that much because he just, he lost his shit for the lack of a better term. Um, he flips out, starts screaming and all this other stuff. Sid, who's JD's wife, had to leave because she didn't want to be around that environment. And you know, truthfully, if, if you were in that environment, you would be scared if this stranger is flipping shit, screaming and yelling over something like this, right? And, and ultimately there's no reason to ever react that way, right? Even myself, I'm ashamed that I allowed Judah's anger to influence myself because there were some times in there that I told Judah to shut the fuck up, right? Because I was tired of him just screaming and screaming and screaming. We're getting nothing resolved that way. So uh, Judah, gets the, Judah gets the title. He realizes it's a rebuilt title, which I don't think is a big fucking deal because every single car Judah owns is a rebuilt title. The C8's a rebuilt title. The Hellcat's a rebuilt title. So I, I don't know what the deal is. You can clearly drive those on the street still, um, but whatever. So I was like, hey, it's not a big deal. If you want your money back, we'll give you your money back. And he loses his shit. He's like, what do you mean it's not a big deal? He kept saying, I flew halfway across the country. Mind you, North Carolina is just two states over from Florida, right? It was literally only a six hour drive. So it's probably just an hour flight. So he did not fly across country. He simply traveled a couple of states. But I digress. I still wanted to try to find a solution. So I'm like, hey man, it's not a big deal. If you want your money back, we'll get your money back. He didn't want that. He just wanted to cause a scene because he wants to put that on YouTube to get clicks, get views, everything like that. And again, for me, I'm new to YouTube. So I thought the content people put on YouTube is genuine and that's how I'm going to be. I'm not gonna be one of those guys that, that edits videos to make it look a certain way. I'm just gonna provide it to you how it was. But I could, I could see 
from an outsider looking in, he was doing this to get content and make himself look like the victim. So he, he goes off and he's calling a bunch of people and I know that he's, and you guys will see, he's literally just doing it for YouTube. He's calling other people and trying to seek validation for his reaction, right? He's calling other people and trying to get them on board with how he's reacting to the situation. And here's the thing, it, it was a waste of my time, right? I had other buyers lined up. I didn't need to sell it to Judah, but he kept calling me when I sold the 350Z, begging me not to sell it to the person that was already on the way. And he was like, listen, man, I really wanna get into drifting. So I wanted to help him because I'm that type of person. I want to share this passion with others. I've only been drifting for about two and a half years and it's been such an amazing motorsport. I get so much joy out of it. It's so rewarding to, I don't know, kind of control an out of control vehicle. So I wanna share that with others. And Judah, since he does have a presence on YouTube, I was happy to share all the partners that I have on my build. So I'll just be transparent with you guys. I'm, I'm blessed and fortunate to be in a situation where a lot of the partners on the cars, I've not had to pay for the products, right? I simply uh, do a review of the product, an honest review to, to help others make the decision as, as to whether or not they wanna use this product on their car. So the so the connections i have with fdf for example who makes angle kits for the cars i was already in talks and and we can get judah when he purchased this vehicle an angle kit i was already in talks with other partners to get him other parts that would give him the tools to be successful in learning how to drift so i was happy to share those resources with judah and that's why i was so excited that this would go to him because at the time from the videos I watched, he seemed like a, a genuine guy. And But all that being said, I still wanted to try to resolve the situation. That's just the type of person I am, right? I could tell that Judah was upset and though I don't understand why he's upset, because to me, it's not a big deal. I'd happily pay the 7,500 if I needed another Corvette, but I already have two drift cars. It wouldn't make sense for me to get a third. So for me, it wasn't a big deal, but I knew to Judah it was. So I wanted to make sure that I tried to resolve the situation. So I went to him, I tried to talk to him and he just, he wasn't hearing it. He just kept getting irate and he would not calm down and there's truthfully no reason for that because you're not gonna solve anything in anger. So at that point I was like, let me step away and I'm just gonna call the next guy because I feel like this, this deal is going south. So I called Frankie and I was like, listen man, I don't wanna say that you can buy it yet, um, but I wanna let you know, I don't think the person that's here is gonna buy the vehicle. So if you still want it, you can have it. And I was just transparent with Frankie. I said, he's Smoky Drift by the way, everyone. I said, hey man, um, the car has a rebuilt title. We just found out now. So Frankie tells me, no man, it's not a big deal. I want the car. I'll come with 7,500 cash right now. I'm not gonna try to haggle you or anything. That is a steal of a price, which he's absolutely correct it is. And I said, listen man, don't, don't come yet. He was traveling from Florida, by the way. Don't come up here yet because I wanna wait to see what Judah wants to do. So I go to Judah and he said, hey man, like, it, and, I'm, I'm talking in a calm manner, but that's not definitely not how he was. It, ultimately though, he said he wanted it for 5,500 or he would walk. So I called the owner of the vehicle. And uh, matter of fact, someone from the shop had already called the owner of the vehicle and explained like, you know, Judah, Judah flipped out and basically yelled at everyone in the shop. So when I called the owner, Devin, and I said, hey man, he wants to offer 5,500, uh, his response was, fuck that guy. And I completely understand. If I was in his shoes, I would say the same thing, right? There is no reason for anyone to treat another human being how Judah did. He can, he can feel like he was misled and all these other things, but that doesn't give him the right to treat any other human being the way that he did. Yelling at them, cursing at them, things of that nature. So I go to him and I tell him, listen man, the owner doesn't wanna sell it for anything less than 5,500. 5, and again, he flips his shit just immediately to anger. That was always his response. And, uh, it sucks that he's that type of person, but he said that he spent $1,000 on the trip. And it's crazy because the day before he said the trip was only 400 bucks. And then he made a comment like, oh, well, that's one way. You don't know it's two ways, you dumb motherfucker, or something like this. Um, and still the math doesn't add up to 1,000, 400 and 400 would be 800, but, but it is what it is. So I asked him, I said, what's gonna be fair to you? And his response was, if we split it, if I give him $500. So, and his, his words were, if I give him $500, he'll squash it. Um, he's not gonna make a YouTube video or anything like that. And I was like, all right, whatever. So if, if this is gonna make him feel good about the transaction, then I'll go ahead and just give him the 500 bucks. Now, what I wanted to do, just because I wanted him out of my face, truthfully, like I was tired of dealing with this shit. 
We've been working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day for the past two weeks working on these cars. I don't want to deal with this fucking crybaby, to be completely honest with you guys. I was like, Darius will take you back to the airport and uh, I'll pay you after the guy picks it picks it up later because Frankie was already going to be on the way. And um, there was no reason other than I didn't, I didn't want to fucking give Judah what he wanted. He was acting like a total asshole. I just didn't want to give him the satisfaction of getting what he wanted. So I told him no. He just kept bitching and bitching and bitching. So ultimately I paid him the $500. Then he still posts the YouTube video. He still does all this shit. So it's like, that just kind of shows you the type of person that he is. Okay, so as you just heard, Frankie is super happy with the car. He knows it's a great deal. Ultimately, this just wasn't the car for, for Judah, and that's completely fine. It's just his reaction to the situation that is unacceptable. So uh, again, it's one thing to be upset. You know, you put this image in your head of the perfect car, and then you go to buy it, and it's not what you expect it to be. It's okay to be upset about that. What's not okay is if you treat another human being like shit. So don't be like him. There's enough hate in the world. Make sure you guys are spreading kindness. This is a lesson learned for me. Um, I watched his YouTube videos. I enjoyed his content. I thought he was a good guy, um, but this kind of showed his true colors, so I'm definitely not going to be doing any more transactions with him or anything like that. If you like this video and you have it on your heart to subscribe, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Otherwise, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys the cam install and the dyno and some testing of what we did up at J-Speed Tuning. A huge shout out again to J-Speed. Could not do this without you. Um, that's it for this video, everyone. Make sure you are kind to each other, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.